In this video, we get started with the AZ-900 Azure Fundamentals exam again. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. This May, Microsoft updated the skills required for the English language version of the AZ-900 Azure Fundamentals exam. I can only assume that other versions will follow shortly. Because of that change, I'm republishing the AZ-900 content to match the updated skills required for the exam. This video is the first in a series to help anyone studying for the AZ-900. The following information covers skill objectives found in Describe Cloud Computing under Describe Cloud Concepts. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share this channel with a friend. Keep an eye on the playlist for updates and check out my courses on Azure Hybrid Identities and Azure Virtual Desktop. The links are below. If you're watching this, you're likely beginning a journey on learning cloud computing and Azure services. I'm excited for you. Azure is a fast growing cloud platform and the skills required to manage Azure services are in high demand. You're making a good choice. If you're starting out, cloud computing may seem overwhelming. Don't be discouraged. I've worked with Azure for years and still feel overwhelmed at times, but that's okay. We all have to start someplace. Don't give up. It's like eating an elephant one bite at a time. Focus on learning individual concepts one at a time and build your skill set. But enough of that, let's get started with some concepts. By the way, I understand that no one likes to watch a bunch of slides. I'll try to mix it up as best I can, but being a section all about concepts, it's going to be a lot of me talking. These slides are available on my website if you'd like to follow along or use them to study. The link is below along with a link to more information on the AZ-900 exam. So what is cloud computing? I frequently heard cloud computing referred to as someone else's computer. Although arguably correct, that definition gets away from some of the features that make cloud computing so relevant at this time. I'm going to stick with Microsoft's definition for this video, since this is all about a Microsoft exam. It's the delivery of computing services including servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, and intelligence over the internet. It offers faster innovation, flexible resources, and economies of scale. Economies of scale simply means that the more an organization does or buys something, the cheaper it gets. For example, it's typically cheaper to buy grocery items in bulk. The same with servers. Buying one or two servers is relatively expensive, but it may be cheaper per server to buy 100. These economies of scale help keep cloud costs down. We only pay for cloud services we use. This is important compared to on-premises computing where we pay for everything if we use it or not. Only paying for what we use helps keep operating costs low and configured properly, we can scale out if business needs change. Let's look at an analogy. We all like to eat, but not all of us grow our own food. I know people garden, but I'm talking about more than that. We don't plow our own fields, grow our own livestock, harvest, and so on. With the effort and overhead for land and equipment, it's cheaper to rely on farmers for most of the work. They have economies of scale, producing a lot of food cheaper than we could ourselves. But with traditional do-it-yourself infrastructure, it's kind of like farming. The organization is responsible for all the servers, including the operating systems, networking, internet access, and telco services, storage, maintenance contracts, security, and anything else related to the infrastructure. At some point, an organization may outsource some of those tasks. Maybe move hardware to a dedicated data center with climate control and backup power, and leverage a third party for some management and support tasks. These are all good options, but there's still management overhead, and the responsibility still falls on the organization to make sure things are working. The intent of cloud computing is to reduce the management overhead of the do-it-yourself approach to computing and provide a platform that allows IT to focus on tasks that add value to the organization. Cloud services also offer cost savings compared to on-premises. Staff doesn't need to set up hardware, manage maintenance contracts, or size services for peak capacity. I'm going to go on a slight tangent here with the phrase on-premises. A premises is a location. A premise is a thought, statement, or idea. Avoid saying on-premise in the cloud computing context. If you're not sure, just say on-prem. Everyone will know what you're talking about. Okay, back to it. Cloud computing is globally scalable, meaning we can leverage compute resources across the country or even across the globe, bringing applications and services closer to our customers and end users. 
Azure Cloud constantly upgrades and replaces equipment to maintain peak performance. And Azure handles the redundancy requirements for enterprise-grade solutions. They also offer large-scale enterprise-grade security solutions built into services or as an additional premium add-on. Security is a big deal when moving to the cloud. Microsoft offers over 90 compliance certifications to satisfy the requirements of most industries and governments. Some organizations cite security or compliance as a reason preventing them from moving to the cloud. My belief is most organizations don't come close to the security standards Microsoft put in place for Azure. Now that we understand what cloud computing is, let's finish the video with a shared responsibility model. I'll start with a short summary of a conversation I had early in my cloud computing career. The option of putting a server in Azure was being explored. I brought up that we had to come up with a backup and patching solution for the server. The response was, we don't have to, it's in the cloud. That response was incorrect. And that brings us to the shared responsibility model. It's incredibly important to understand what responsibilities are the customers and what are the cloud providers and what responsibilities are shared between the two. Because as my conversation illustrated, the assumption that backups and patching were automatically handled by Azure was incorrect and could lead to loss of data or servers becoming compromised. The shared responsibility model defines the division of responsibility for a given type of cloud service. When hosting servers on premises, all responsibilities fall on the customer, either directly or outsourced. In the cloud, there's a division of responsibilities for managing the environment. How they're divided will depend on the type of service. We'll review them in detail in an upcoming video. As an example, we can go back to putting a server in Azure. Microsoft will take care of the physical hardware, hypervisor, power, and cooling, but the OS patching and applications on the server are the responsibility of the customer. There are Azure services to support management items such as backups and patch management, but they need to be enabled by the customer. No matter what the service is, however, the data, endpoints that access the cloud, accounts, and access management are always the customer's responsibility. That brings us to the end of this video. I hope that helps give a better understanding of cloud computing and the shared responsibility model. Please keep an eye on the playlist and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.